Olá, cripto investidores. Eu estou aqui com o Michael Conte, CEO da Phantom Foundation. Eu vou agora perguntar um pouco sobre o evento, sobre as expectativas dele para o projeto e como ter uma conversa aqui com ele. Hi, Michael. Thanks for receiving me. Hello. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. First question I'd like to 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 do is: Are you enjoying the event? Uh, and you you have do you have any insights so far? Oh uh, yeah, I, I've been enjoying the event a lot. You know, <laughs> typically at these conferences, I go around like meeting people inside of the event, outside of the event. Um, and tomorrow I'll be presenting. So we've got like our own foundations panel, what they call it here uh, for Phantom. So it'll be like myself talking about like the Phantom technology and then also talking about, um, and, and then other people in the community talking about like their like particular projects and also more about like the Phantom community itself. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it's really exciting to be here and I do appreciate the opportunity for Coindesk for sending this mm -hmm. up for us. That's great. So blockchains like Solana and Avalanche have been uh, offering uh, many incentives for developers of native protocols, uh, something that Phantom uh, has tried to do. Uh, and uh, my question is, does the Phantom Foundation plan to create incentive programs to address this issue? Not issues, but uh, this lack of uh, uh, incentives, maybe? If there's any lack of incentive? Well, we had a previous incentive program where if you look at the statistics, we gave over 36 million FTM to existing projects on chain, some of the biggest projects on chain. And at the time of, of the current founder price, that equated to over 40 million US dollars. And that was only in the space of about six months. So <clears throat> what we're planning to do now is that we realized that the previous incentive program had a number of like particular issues with it um, that um, in retrospect, we would have like addressed before. Uh, we kind of figured out that if we partnered up with, with um, our Gitcoin, which is this like big grants incentive program on Ethereum and have them deploy to Phantom, then basically the community will be able to select you know, existing projects and new projects that they wanted to see on the Phantom ecosystem and we would apply funding there. So there is a new incentive program coming along. It's gonna be quite a big incentive program. We earmarked uh, about 300 million like FTM towards it. And so when Gitcoin is able to launch on Phantom, people will be able to vote for their projects on Phantom and they will get um, some incentives and some support that way. But I also want to stress that it's not just like um, this incentive program that matters. It's also about all the other support that we provide for projects on the Phantom ecosystem. So for example, like we provide like free legal advice, um, uh, free code reviews. We also have um, an automated um, uh, auditing system, continuous auditing system de uh, being deployed on Phantom itself. Um, we also have provided a lot of like um, um, cross marketing support. We provide integration support and community support. So there's a lot of different like support areas that we provide from the foundation itself to the projects in the ecosystem, as well as like the Decoin Incentive Program that is coming to Phantom. Ah, okay, that's great, thank you. And uh, when will we be able to see the Phantom Virtual Machine in the air and how competitive will it be with the Ethereum Virtual Machine or, or other uh, uh, virtual machines? Yeah, so we have a team of uh, three people at the moment that are specifically working on uh, creating a new virtual machine or more specifically a new um, smart contract execution stack. So one of the people that's leading that is our chief research officer, uh, Professor Bernard Schultz. So he's an expert in programming languages and virtual machines and has been studying um, smart contracts and EVM for about the past five years. And I used to be a research student on the HIS for my honors thesis at the University of Sydney where he's a full professor at. And so he has brought on port two other postdoctoral um, people on his team who he's previously worked with, all experts, all backgrounds and you know, paralyzed uh, paralyzation, programming languages, virtual machine development, and there's a, there's a full person joining the team on um, our next month. And so those individuals are gonna be working on building a new virtual machine. There's many differences compared to the Ethereum virtual machine, but basically it will allow you to execute instructions a lot faster and also execute smart contracts a lot more securely. Because right now there's no checking at the virtual machine level um, as to like whether like a smart contract has a particular flaw or not. In, in this case, with a new virtual machine, you'll be able to do the checking on the virtual machine itself. So it gets you very, very specific results that will allow people to create much more secure smart contracts. But it's not just like the virtual machine you mentioned. It's also things like a, a, a new way of like storing data or processing data. So there, there's a lot of bottlenecks around like how you uh, process smart contracts using the EVM. We want to kind of like fix those bottlenecks with what we call like a quote unquote flat storage solution. It's basically like a different data structure that allows you to execute particularly more complicated smart 
smart contract um, transactions a lot more efficiently than currently with the EVM. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work being done and it's some of the work that I'll be talking about tomorrow um, mm -hmm. at the presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And about uh, the bridge between uh, Web3 and Web2, how do you plan to attract uh, developments and users from Web2 to, to, to Web3? Yeah, so um, we, we've been doing a lot of outreach. So kind of the aim of the foundation is first and foremost to work on the underlying technology, like I just talked about with the middleware, but mm. also the consensus. But another big aspect is also growing the community. Because in the end, what we're doing all of these technology upgrades about is for the community, right? It's about better transactions, faster transactions, uh, cheaper transactions, more secure transactions. And so what we're trying to pitch to like other developers out there is, you know, give Phantom a go, see what it's like to develop on it, you know, um, like, like, like know the experience, you know, it should be an experience that's kind of similar to deploying on Ethereum, except much cheaper and with much faster consensus because of the way that we process transactions. So that's kind of like what we advertise to people and also that you'll get direct support from the foundation um, in kind of the ways that I mentioned um, on this interview and that, you know, you'll be able to talk to the team directly, you'll be able to talk to myself directly and really just try Phantom itself. That's what we basically tell people. We have a platform out there, come and experiment on Phantom and if you like on it, then, you know, keep, uh, keep building on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, for uh, uh, finally, for the the, the last question, uh, do you have uh, any plans to uh, bring the institutional clients, uh, institutional uh, investor to to Fendel? And do you have uh, a good infrastructure to to do that? Yeah. So uh, how the infrastructure? Sorry. <laughs> Oh, no worries, yeah. So, um, yeah, we have been talking to a lot of different institutions. Some of them are like kind of like government entities. Um, others are, are like kind of like private institutions. Um, I, I found out that it, it, it's, it's a bit of a slow process because you have to educate um, institutions, particularly governments, about what are the advantages of blockchain technology, how it works, um, what are the particular use cases. So we have worked with a few previous governments. For example, we worked um, with the previous Afghan government. So we managed to um, verify um, uh, generic drugs that were imported in, from India into Afghanistan. I think we certified about 30 or 40,000 products and they were distributed around um, pharmacies in Kabul. Now, obviously, because the government changed in um, Afghanistan, you know, we're no longer working there, mm -hmm. but we still own that technology and it's something that we're trying to apply across different governments in the Middle East and also a few in Europe as well. And also there's other discussions around, you know, tokenizing assets, around CBDCs, around, you know, digitizing, for example, like land rights. So there's a number of different use cases that we're going to institutions and talking to them about and there should be some announcements actually fairly soon mm -hmm. um, but it is a bit of a long process um, but in the end I think institutions will eventually understand how blockchain technology works the benefits of blockchain technology just given enough time I think a lot of it is about mm -hmm. education and and seeing how it mm -hmm. works ok thank you so much for your time Michael obrigado por acompanhar a gente do Money Times logo mais a gente vai ter outra entrevista acompanha aqui nosso YouTube